Liam, first of all, I suppose, look, all the, the talk and the, the build-up to this match has been about Mourinho, his future at Manchester United. Like, are we watching or are we about to watch the, the kind of beginning of the end? Well, I think it's almost over, Dara, yes. Uh, I, I think uh, he's lost the confidence of, of the players and respect of the players. Uh, he's been far too critical and confrontational in, in regard to them. He's called a number of them out publicly. And um, when you're a player in the dressing room, and you're, you might not be on the end of his criticism publicly, but you could be a friend of someone who is. And I think it's gone on far too long. And I think that United dressing room, I've had, I've had him up to there. And uh, I don't think he's getting support from the directors. Uh, certainly didn't get it in the transfer market at the start of the season from Ed Woodward. Uh, and any Manchester United fan I speak to, and there's lots of them, particularly in Dublin, there's no real support for Mourinho. It's very, very few and far between the amount of people that want to see him stay at the helm. He's far too confrontational. It's all about himself. Uh, he hasn't done his job properly. The style of football is not in the traditions of mm. Manchester United. Um, his, the players he's bought, they haven't clicked. Um, and I think it's almost over. Mm. Now, there's a lot of people saying that if he wins tonight, and having won the first game, a win tonight will set them on the road to qualify. Um, so the people are saying if he wins tonight and beats Newcastle at the weekend, then he's safe. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Damien, uh, you know, you've been in many a dressing room with Mourinho, and you were, you were telling us off air, you were on the end of this abrasive style at times from him in front of your teammates. Like, are you surprised that... It's going in this direction, or appears to be. Yeah, it stinks of. I think the the two times he he got the sack uh, from Chelsea, maybe he walked away the first time. I'm not sure way, what way they called it, but um, yeah, listen, it's their worst start in 29 years. They say it looks like he's lost the dressing room. Uh, the thing that you know kills me is you know players can hate their manager, but you can still run. And you know there's an awful lot be made over the past 24 hours about sprints, a hundred yeah. off the top team of the sprints table, um, and. You know, I thought they were near on embarrassment uh, against West Ham at the weekend. Um, but, you know, I still find it hard to, to criticise Jose Mourinho, and that's the hold he had over me, the hold he had over the Chelsea dressing room all them years ago. And what's, what's changed in the last 12, 13 years? I don't know. The, his attention to detail as a coach was, was second to none, the charm, the charisma. Yeah, he, he screamed in everyone's face. He'd scream two inches from my face, but mm. it didn't make me... You know, not love him anymore. I still adored him. I still ran as hard as ever. So maybe it's players have changed and he, they can't cope with his confrontational side, like Liam says. Um, Liam also said it, 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 it's all about himself. It was all about himself 12, 13 yeah. years ago as well. So maybe players have changed nowadays and he hasn't moved with the times. I don't know. But it's just, for me, it's hard to criticise him because that's the hold yeah. he should well, he have over a dressing room. He was, he was winning, winning then. Yeah, he was winning then. Yeah. And when you win as a manager, it empowers you and you can get away with a lot of things. But he hasn't, he hasn't won, really. Well, he's won over... a couple of trophies. No, the well, I was, was just about thing. to say, Dari, yeah. he hasn't won what they expect them to win at Old Trafford. Yeah, sure. yeah. They, they feel that that club should be winning the league or challenging for the league year in, year out. And it hasn't happened in his tenure, and it's the third year now. Mm. Uh, Richie, I, I, I read somebody saying that it, the way this whole thing is developing, it's, uh, the comment was, well, you know, it looks like Mourinho's trying to get sacked, trying to get this. There'd be a big payoff if they had to get rid of him between 20 and 30 million pounds sterling. Uh, is he trying to get sacked? I don't know if he's trying to get sacked, but I do know it. Tate Duffer could fill the whole era build up here with stories about how effective Marino was back in the day with his management style, his motivational style, uh, how he could organise a team, discipline everyone, get everyone feeling like they were world beaters. The, the football was good to watch at times, there was trophies coming in. But I don't know how many Man United players today, or the Chelsea players from his most recent time there, would say anything like that at all. Like this. United's problems are deeper than Mourinho. He didn't cause them all in the club and they're not going to all go away if he leaves in the morning. But if you're championing Mourinho's cause, if you're a defender of Mourinho, it's not obvious to me anymore what exactly you're defending. Like, is it his style of play? Is it his ability in the transfer market, the way he handles the directors, the way he treats players, his public comments, the results he gets? Almost, almost all of those measurements, you're sitting there going, 
What are we defending it's if we're defending yeah, Jose even Mourinho coaching, anymore? Even his yeah. coaching, Everything Richie. about it. You know, he hasn't put that defence right. That defence is leaking goals. been leaking goals for the last couple of seasons. Uh, and he hasn't been able to put it right. And his, his uh, solution to the problems now is buy another player, buy another player. I asked Damien when we were talking earlier on, he used to go into detail and coaching and yeah, how he wanted to. Why does he not anymore? But he, ha he, he yeah. just seems to be chopping and changing all the time, particularly the central defence. And that doesn't inspire confidence amongst the defence, and that's why they're leaking goals. They're yeah. not coached. Liam, th this next piece, this is yours, and, and, and you've called this warning signs. This goes back to last season. Uh, and, and from this competition and the Sevilla games in the knockout round and, and you were looking at, at things that disturbed you at that time. Well, this was a really bad result in Manchester United's Europe, uh, Champions League history, wasn't it? You know, they got a draw away from home in Seville and then they got done at Old Trafford. And what he said after the match was completely ridiculous. He was talking about himself and how many times he'd won the trophy and things like that. Yeah. And instead of addressing what's going on in the field and particularly in defence... He's, he's renowned as being a great coach. That's why we asked Damien earlier on. Uh, but he certainly hasn't got the grips with this Manchester United defence. They're all over the place. And if they play anything like they did this time last March, uh, uh, they're going to be in for some trouble, you know. Uh, he's chopped and changed his, his defence. He's bought Lindelof. He's bought Bailey. Now, this is the back four now. This is Lindelof and this is Smalling. Uh, Valencia Young, um, you watch how they how they play in this game. This was a way to Seville, not closing down. Uh, mistake here by Lindelof. Look at the look at the mix up in defence here. He just hasn't shown that he is a Manchester United centre half. And Mourinho bought him uh, a free header. This is the game, Old Trafford. Uh, one of the worst results in Champions League history for Manchester United. Uh, again, plenty of bodies back, but Seville are causing all sorts of problems. And this is now by the centre-back that he bought. And watch his defending here. Yeah, here it is, yeah. It doesn't get the grips with the forward at all. Uh, Chaos in defence. Now, that was last February, March, Dara. And if he's that good a coach, he, he's not doing it with the defence. Mm. All his solution seems to be is to Woodward, give me more money to buy another centre-back. Give me more money to buy... Woodward didn't. Now, well, if you were Woodward and you watched Lindelof and you watched Pai, you wouldn't give him any money. And that's what the problem... There really is, uh, at, at Old Trafford now, uh, a crisis. Mm. And we'll see tonight, they should, as, as, uh, as Ray said from Old Trafford, they should handle this Valencia team with the, with the talent they have on the pitch. If they play in, in, in any way organised and co with confidence, they should beat Valencia, no problem. Damien, I just want to get into you know, those, those comments that you made about Mourinho as a coach, and Liam referred to it there, with you know, improving the Manchester United defenders. Sure, he wanted another defender... Uh, signed another centre back signed in the summer. He did not get the money for that. But you've seen this guy up close working with Ferreira, Carvalho, Terry, all really accomplished players and probably didn't need to do an awful lot of work with them anyway. Yeah, the one thing I would say is when he did buy, and I can only go off the two years I yeah. had with him, he bought the finished article. Carvalho, sure. Gallus was there, Terry was there, Ferreira, and they were proper defenders from day one. So I wouldn't say they, they needed much uh, coaching. They, all they came to do was play. Whereas this lot, uh, by uh, Lindelof has been a disaster, you'd have to say. He certainly hasn't improved, but, you know, the one thing I would say about Mourinho is he coaches. Um, again, this is 13 years ago with me, but he's on the pitch every day, attention to detail, preparation for games. You do become a better player, so yeah. um, I can't really point the finger at him there. Maybe Lindelof just ain't up to it. Or um, by this is just who by, they are yeah, and they listen, can't be improved. His pace, power, everything, he's... On paper, you think, wow, this boy could be a player. But for me, I agree with Liam. He hasn't improved either. But, you know, I'd be reluctant to, to point the finger at Jose because I've seen him on the training pitch. He's, he's incredible. He's the best coach I ever had by, by a mile. And mm. I've, I've had top coaches. Nothing will ever touch him. So, um, and listen, 
I, I know I said earlier, I find it hard to criticise yeah. him, but that's, that's just the truth. You go there and if you're a sponge and you're willing to improve, you will improve because he's a top-class coach. Yeah. Um, well, what does that tell us about this Manchester United group? That, like, we, we'll assume that he is still doing the level of coaching, the attention to detail. OK, he's kind of... He's described as reactive more than proactive and that he, he's more interested at times in what the other team are doing than him, than his own side. So, like, what's, what's going wrong here? Why is the whole thing breaking the, down? The one thing I would say to him, and that's why, why he doesn't probably stay around too long, is, you know, he just likes to buy instead of improve the player. If he's going to stay there for one, two, three years, instead of trying to improve that, that player over, over time, maybe he just looks to buy. And the club, which maybe should have been alarm bells in the summer, didn't really back him. Um, and maybe it's gone off what he's purchased centre half wise in the market already. But mm. you know, if that was me as a manager, and you know, you're going, to, who was it off uh, Spurs Alderweireld? Yeah. Um, and they didn't back him, and it looks like Alderweireld wanted to come. You know, already that's alarm bells going on. Van Dijk. Van Dijk as well. He was up, wasn't he? He was up for grabs. A lot of you know, Liverpool seemed to hesitate, yeah. and uh, could he have come in there and got a really top class centre back? You know. But the worrying thing yeah. for me yeah. is they spent. He spent 490 million, and. I think that team needs another... <laughs> you could go double that again. Uh, like right back, you got Valencia, Young, they're just converted yeah. wingers, two centre-halves, further up the pitch, you could go on all day. So, you he know, played Mac Tomalay, who's, uh, who's a central midfield player. He yeah. played him at the back against West Ham. Now, and well, the lad was all over the place. Indeed you know? he was, but like, was he making a point there to the board? I saw somebody describe well, it as a tactical, that, dirty no, protest. Yeah, playing well, him would, there. Yeah, I wouldn't rule that out with, uh, with Mourinho. He's, it's, it's, it's possible that he, 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 he yeah. could do something like that, just to antagonise uh, Ed Woodward and the board of directors. But playing There's what they spent, by the way. Playing their centre half when you have a fully fit centre half like Bai on the bench is absolutely going to antagonise Bai. Now he's in the team tonight again. Is one of the players he needs a performance from. So again, it's his handling of, of, of people. It's his handling of the dressing room. You, you look at a distance, and you, you asked a question earlier. Does, does he want to get the sack? And I don't deep down believe that's the yeah. case. But he's behaving in a way, which surely he must know because we've seen it from a distance before. This only ends one way. Yeah, there's only so many. Fronts you can exactly. be raging but, but Richard, we've on. seen him behave this way before. Now I just want to the point though as well. Just uh, one moment, Liam. Like the point about players now in 2018, agents in the background. You know, like Damien didn't have. He, he, I'm sure probably upset him when Mourinho's in his face shouting and roaring in front right. of the rest of the group. But like, can you not do that with professional footballers anymore? To be that abrasive to be that confrontational. There are times for it, I'm not sure, every day. I'm sure Klopp does it. I'm sure Sarri does it. I know quite. You don't I'm read sure. about it in the paper. Exactly. Right? That's yeah. my point. There's a way in which you can, I don't want to say hammer it, but you, you can criticise a player. You can tell him where he's gone wrong. You can point what he should be doing right. You can, it, it's not all kind of praises and yeah. hugs and everything like that. So, so it's wrong to say that all players nowadays will react badly simply to criticism. But does it, like management involves dealing with people. And Mourinho, the more we see of him in the last few years, he just looks to be failing in that area consistently. Is he an old-fashioned coach now, an old-fashioned well, manager of he, he, I'll tell you people. what he's looking, he's looking at someone now. You, you describe United in many ways. It's a club in turmoil or it's a crisis or whatever. Do, do you genuinely look at Mourinho and say, he's the fellow who's got the solutions? I, I reckon he's you know, kind of versatile enough or open to change, or does he look at his own role in this... Is he the man that's got the solutions? All ends up, I would say, no. There's, yeah. there's nothing about him where you think he looks at himself and how he could do things differently. Their performance on Saturday was awful against West Ham and his post-match comments apparently matched what he said in the dressing room. He pointed to the failings of the match officials. Kick-off, by the way, has been delayed to 8.05 because of traffic congestion around Old Trafford. That is, uh, well, it's a rare thing for it to happen in the UEFA Champions League. The matches normally start on time. Uh, significant Dara, news. I, Liam, I, please. I, yeah, I think the word we're looking for here uh, is a challenger player. Mm. When, when okay. Mourinho was in Damien's face, he was challenging him to get better. He was saying, you could do this, you could do that. If you listen to me, you will do it. Mm. You've got the ability to do it. And he's not doing that anymore. He's just being critical of players. And one thing, it's been a golden rule all down through football history that you don't really go overboard in criticising your players publicly. And what he did to Luke Shaw mm. last season was outrageous, you know? Mm. And you lose the dressing room. They're mates of Luke Shaw. They'll, they'll say, why is he doing that? And you lo they lose respect. And I think that's what's happened. They're not playing for him. They've downed tools. Pogba against West Ham hardly sprinted in the match. 
Yeah. You know, that tells it all. They don't want him there anymore. Do, Damien, when, when that was happening to you with, with your, uh, your dressing room moments with Mourinho, like, did you see it as a challenge? Or, you know, like now, as, you see, as Liam says, with, with Luke Shaw, although Shaw did come back very trim and is a much better player, he was in luck with injury and all that stuff. So he got that reaction. I remember at the time when we spoke about this before on this programme, you said he wanted to challenge the character of a player to see if he could stand up and say, right, I'm going to take this on board, which you did at the time. Absolutely. I just think time has changed. You know, even I'm an under-16 player with Blackburn Rovers, Kenny de Gleish is the manager. That's the way we were treated then, <laughs> screaming in your face. Yeah. But you can't do that nowadays with 16-year-olds or even first-team players, whether they're, I don't know where it's the phrase, of, they're softer, I don't know, they need an arm around the shoulder and massage their ego, I don't know. So he certainly hasn't moved with the times with that. You just mentioned there, is he old-fashioned? If you say the modern-day manager, if you go around all the top teams, do they play out from the back? Yes. Do they play with a high tempo? Yes. Do they press high? Yes. And are they just relentless in attack? Yes. Mm. Are Manchester United and, and Jose Mourinho? You'd have to say no when you put it like that. Man, you don't try and play out from the back because they haven't got the quality in their centre-halves. They don't press high. Pogba has a go at the weekend about attack, attack, attack. You, you can't see his point as a Man United fan, yeah. back to the Fergie days. So, you know, if you compare it like that, maybe he hasn't moved with the times with management as well. You think Klopp, Guardiola, they're the ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the, the things, actually, Richie, when you look at them, when you look at Manchester United, they play, as Damien says, they're very slow. The, the football is very slow. Now, that's again, flies in the face of what a lot of people said, and Liam referred to it, you know, about the Manchester United style, the attack, attack, attack thing. But, yeah. it, like, why, are they so, why is there no tempo to the way they play? Well, I've been saying it before, like, that, that attack, attack, attack stuff, that, you know, the Man United way, that left when Ferguson left. Sure. Because Moyes didn't play that way, Van Hal didn't play that way, Marina didn't play that way, and everyone knew before they employed those three managers that they don't play that way and they were still employed. So Man United at the moment having a little identity, questioning do the people who are making the decisions actually care about the tradition because their decisions don't seem to pay any, any kind of a, a nod towards them. But why they play that way, it's consistent with a group of players who are demotivated, with a manager who is not getting the best out of them at all and his tactics um, are, are, are difficult to understand at times. We go back to the weekend, he played against West Ham who've up until a couple of weeks ago, they had a very difficult start and he played three or five at the back, midfielder sitting quite close and mm. a very slow tempo and they didn't attack in any numbers with any positivity, they didn't look brash or bold or confident, didn't any of the things that you'd associate with a top team, let alone the very best of what we associate with Manchester mm. United. So there's so many problems at the club and I wonder who are Marino's allies there. You mentioned the word power struggle earlier. He seems to be just power struggle on all fronts with Marino. I think he's losing it in the dressing room. He's certainly losing it with Ed Woodward. And I think he's trying to some charm offensive with the fans in the last couple of weeks, playing up to them, saying, you know, the club players have got to yeah. love the club the way the fans do. When you're at that stage, that's well, desperation. Rui stuff. Faria, his longtime assistant, who's been with them since the Porto days, he's gone. But it, just, just as a, another side to this, like our, you know, we, we, we're, we're building up a picture of. of a dressing room in crisis, a club in crisis. I, I did read a, an article in one of the English papers, Liam, the other day, where, where they, you know, they were putting another spin on it to say, right, are things really that bad? Last season, 81 points. Season before that, they had their two trophies. In this current team, he has probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. He has Lukaku. He has two centre-backs that he signed. We know they're not, they're, they're not where they should be as players. Um, a World Cup winner in the team. He got Sanchez ahead of Manchester City, which kind of annoyed them. Like, you know, the, are the bones of it there to, to turn this around? Well, they would be if there were per performances on top of that. Uh, the highest uh, wage yeah. bill in the Premier League. You look as well. how, the, how the players performed. You know, we've gone on in the, we've gone into detail mm. about Pogba. He was very, very good in the World Cup. Uh, uh, conscientious, doing his job. Just not interested at Manchester United to do that. Sanchez, who was a wonderful player at Arsenal has gone up there and he's in and out of the team and when he does play, he doesn't perform. Rashford, who was a brilliant, tremendous talent when he burst on the scene uh, uh, under yeah. Van Hal, he hasn't trained on, he hasn't gone on to be no. the player that everyone thought he would be. Why is that? You know, all these questions have got to be asked. Uh, and the, the midfield is, is, is also another area where he's he spent money on players, Fred, um, and I've watched him 
uh, he, he's not the player that Manchester United need. They need leadership. Now, when, when he was manager at Chelsea all those years ago, uh, I think uh, John Terry was an obvious leader, wasn't he, Damien, in, in that dressing room? After Lampard, the Lampard of, yeah. would have been another. Was mm. McAuley there? Yeah. You know, these were players that you could count on 100%. They would sort out the problems for you. Mourinho hasn't been able to do it at Old Trafford. Matic was meant to be the guy, his kind of on-field well, general. Well, to be fair, if you ask any Manchester United uh, fan, they would say Matic has consistently performed for Manchester United, but mm. it's what's happening behind Matic that's the problem. And you mentioned De Gea. Why is he the best goalkeeper in the Premier League? Because he's he making gets, brilliant he, saves week in, week out. He gets out. a lot of practice. Yeah. yeah, and he saved Manchester United time and time again. Liam, uh, George mentioned beforehand about he, they didn't think it was going to be a full house at Old Trafford mm. this evening, 70-odd thousand or whatever. Um, like, what, what way will the fans react to this? Like the well, Stratford yeah, end? I, at, you I, know, know, the I know having been at, uh, close to Arsenal over the last few years, in the end the fans stayed away. They wanted change yeah. at, at the Emirates uh, and eventually they got it. Arsene Wenger left and that's what fans do. I know some Manchester United fans who are <laughs> friends of mine said, I'm not going anymore while he's in charge. And I bet there's a lot of people feeling that way. Mm. But it's Champions League night. To go back to the team, this is, this is the most prestigious trophy in world football, I believe. Um, club football. Yeah. So these players should be up for it. So what we're looking for tonight is energy. If the manager's done his job, you'll see a confident Manchester United uh, team. You'll see an energised Manchester United team. If you see Manchester United struggle, well, it's another nail in the coffin.